I'm Kevin Shaw, and you're watching the Watercraft Journal. All right, this one's gonna go a bit differently. Some of you are gonna love this review, some of you are really not gonna like it. Either way, it's the truth, at least as far as I can see through the lens of my three decades in the industry. When it comes to performance jet skis, there are two characteristics that matter way more than anything else. First, how does the ski ride through choppy, windblown, and just plain ugly water conditions? And second, does it have the power to push through it? Any ski can ride smoothly on glass. It takes zero talent or ability to cruise on flat water in a straight line. Heck, a log on a river with enough current can do it comfortably. But when the wind kicks up or the tide goes out, you're going to care way more that your new ski can track straight through chop than whether you can call up Siri to access your favorite playlist by voice command. Sorry, but all that other stuff is just fluff. No, really. There isn't a ski out there that has enough bells, whistles, and doodads that can compensate for a crappy, bouncy ride, unpredictable garbage handling, or being a gutless toad that can't get out of its own way. That might sound harsh, and a few of you pearl-clutching, hand-wringing types might get offended and want to complain to my manager, but that's the honest truth. And in today's day and age, I think folks are more interested in harsh truths than me pussyfooting around people's feelings. So let's just be straight. When it comes to open ocean riding, Kawasaki's Ultra Platform is unmatched. It's racked up more offshore and long distance endurance championships than any other ski, not only available on the market, but ever. We're not talking about roundy round closed course stuff, we're talking big open ocean man versus the sea racing. Long Beach to Catalina, Ocean Side to Dana Point, Carujet, Aqua X, even the 300 mile Mark Hahn Enduro. The scoreboard is bleeding green, guys, and it's all Kawasaki across the board. Numbers don't lie. So yeah, that's why Kawasaki didn't screw with its hull. That's because it's pretty much friggin' perfect. It's still made from durable gel-coated FMC fiberglass, so it won't flex or crack like the other guys. But they did go ahead and reinforce the bow's 22 and a half degree dead rise to stiffen it up, but that's not even the big news we're sharing here. When it came time to update the Kawasaki 310X jet ski for 2022, Kawasaki kept what worked, like the real deal deep V hull and the powertrain, and went to work on fixing the stuff that needed the most attention. What that resulted in was a totally redesigned deck that lowered the ski's center of gravity and radically improved the overall ergonomics. Previously, it used to sit pretty high up in the saddle. Now, the new overall deck height was lowered 1.38 inches, and the new two-piece three-person seat was narrowed 3.15 inches at the knee. The new Cowie is also using a revised formula of urethane foam that provides deeper hip support and improved jolt and vibration absorption, so if you're sitting down, you're not going to get so beaten up. Narrowing the seat at the knees also means you're not riding so spread out, which over time can really start to wear you out. Above the knees, Kawasaki did something really different and ditched the traditional glove box and instead gave you two of them. Each of the fairings open up on gold wing style hinges, giving you a combined 10.6 gallons of storage. The right side sports a half gallon sized watertight box for your phone or wallet, with a USB port optional as an accessory. In front, the narrow Formula One looking hood covers the 32.8 gallon bow storage. For some reason, Cowie thought shrinking the opening so dang small that you could barely stuff a backpack in there was a good idea. Obviously it wasn't, and I'm pretty bummed about it. And forget about bringing a helmet ever again. A little 0.7 gallon open access pocket in the back is good for stowing a dock line and rounds out the Ultra's 44.5 gallons of total storage, which is a heck of a lot less than the previous model's industry leading 60 gallons. Again, it's just something that's really disappointing. But hold on, I kind of feel like I'm bashing the redesign when there's a ton of stuff to be stoked about. The changes up front did manage to give the Ultra an extra half gallon of fuel capacity, bringing the ski up to 21.1 gallons, so it's still the leader in the industry on that front. It's also an ebony and metallic electric turquoise, which is a nice departure from the usual Kawasaki lime green. The redesign throws in some built-in cleats for docking, splash deflectors and a raised rear bumper for a drier ride, and two big cup holders above the glove boxes. But again, that's kind of little stuff when considering what went into making the Ultra ride better. By making the footwells wider and deeper, you're literally deeper inside of the hull. That means your body weight is lower on the waterline, 
And what does that mean? It means that the Ultra soaks up the bumps, bangs, and vibrations far better than before, which it was already really good at. Better yet, it allows the hull to naturally roll into a corner smoother than before, and that's whether you're riding on total glass or cutting through two-foot chop. Yeah, that's right, you can literally sweep through full throttle S-turns and crosswind blown tidal surf if you want to. You guys on the Great Lakes know exactly what I'm talking about. At the helm are the five-way adjustable tilt handlebars. The neck cranes closer to your lap while sitting and higher when tilted up when you're riding on your feet. Each end is capped with a pistol grip style hand grip and features redesigned control pods with new buttons wrapped in sealed membranes. That might sound a little weird, but these have the best response and feel of any controls before. Kawasaki also lightened the pull of the throttle trigger for less finger fatigue. The throttle trigger is connected to the long overdue brake and reverse system called KSRD, or Kawasaki Smart Reverse with Deceleration, which is new for 2022. The brake and throttle operate on the same spring, so when you hit the brake button, it manually overrides the throttle, deploying the reverse gate and slowing the 310 Ultra to a halt. When you release the trigger, the bucket returns to the neutral position. If you keep pressing the button, the Ultra will spool up to a maximum of 3000 RPM and begin reversing until released. Now for those of us familiar with how the other guys brake and reverse systems work, it does take a little bit of practice. The brake is more of a drag, so the Ultra isn't going to throw you forward into the bars like the others will. It's more of a progressive feeling and not as halting. Okay, now onto the tech stuff. The new Ultra 310X shares the same 7 inch wide full color TFT display as the LX and LXS, just without a few of the higher end features. It's still got the three different display modes, black or white background, self-adjusting screen brightness, and a GPS controlled speedometer. It's also got a tachometer, fuel gauge, drive mode, boost pressure, clock, power mode, compass, trim, cruise control, as well as a display bar that can be set to show a trip meter, total and trip time, oil and engine temperatures, battery voltage, intake air temperature, diagnostic code, and external air and water temperature, yada yada yada, yeah, you get the point. All of this is controlled by a new waterproof jog dial knob and confirmation buttons. The jog dial scrolls through the various screens and features on the TFT digital dashboard. In the bottom left corner of the screen is a big indicator telling you what gear you're in, forward, neutral, or reverse. In the right corner, it tells you what mode you're in. Just hit the mode button on the left hand side of the handlebars and choose from three power modes, full, middle, and low, which is pretty much the same thing as the SLO or smart learning operation key. Full mode gives you all of the Ultra's industry leading 310 horsepower. Middle drops the engine to 80% of the Ultra's total output and is also the default setting when you first fire it up, and low mode is 60% of full power. There's also a one touch five mile an hour mode for no wake zones and cruise control as you'd probably expect. For all you guys looking to best your buddies out on the water, Cowie threw in its new Kawasaki Launch Control Mode, or KLCM. Allowing for single and repeat launches, KLCM automatically adjusts the trim for optimal acceleration. When set in single mode, the launch control will only activate for the first acceleration shot, whereas in repeat mode, the KLCM remains active until manually deactivated. All of this allows for multiple acceleration maps, smart engine monitoring, and throttle response for the same 1,498cc inline four-cylinder dual overhead cam power plant that Kawasaki has used since 2017. Back in 2017, Kawasaki revised the pistons to include a V-groove at the second ring for greater oil retention. This, when added to the overhaul of the engine from back in 2014, gives the Ultra dual underpiston oiling jets fed by a dry sump oil tank built directly into the baffled and partitioned crankcase, dual cooling circuits that feed fresh ambient water through an enlarged coolant passage, and an external oil cooler circulating oil between two cooling jackets, which mitigates heat soak and excessive internal engine operating temperatures. This, force-fed by an Eaton Twin Vortice Series TVS supercharger that crams an almost excessive 16.7 PSI at peak RPM down its throat, the Ultra spits out a true 310 horsepower, producing 1,890 pounds of thrust from its 160 millimeter axial flow single-stage jet pump. All that might sound like Greek to the uninitiated, but it's pure engine porn to us gearheads. And trust me when I say, the Ultra 310X uses every bit of that power. But hold on, to you guys you're gonna cry, of course it does, it's a big old barge. Here's some easy math for you. 
The 2022 Ultra 310X is half an inch shorter than the current RX TX 300. The Sea-Doo is also two and a half inches wider than the Ultra 2, so don't cry to me about putting two Cowies on a trailer together. And if you're gonna whine about weight, get this. Kawasaki lists curb weight instead of dry weight, which means full of oil and gas. Remember, the Kawasaki holds 21.1 gallons of gas, and at 6.1 gallons a gallon, that's 128.7 pounds, dude. Toss in four and a half quarts of oil, and you got another 8.8 .8 pounds. Together, that adds up to 137.6 pounds of fluids, putting the Ultra 310X a hair above 898 pounds, or 65 pounds over the Sea-Doo. And if you measure both skis with 18 and a half gallons, the difference would be a little over 46 pounds. But hey, you still might think that's a lot, and yeah, it's not nothing. But the Ultra's also got two water boxes, a factory installed catch can, a blow off valve, a rear exit exhaust system, and a thick as steel hull, which is all the stuff you other guys wish every night your ski came with. Oh yeah, and both skis are identically priced with an MSRP of $17,499. Personally, the 310X has got it all where it counts and doesn't come weighed down with anything it doesn't need. Instead, it's all business. Out of the gate, this thing pulls hard. It's twin screw blower, it just screams from underneath your seat. Now I managed to click off a 5 to 65 mile per hour acceleration time of 4.77 seconds which bested the Yamaha FX SVHO that I tested two years ago with Jerry Gaddis at just five feet above sea level. But this time, we were 1,044 feet above sea level and sucking mid 90 degree Nevada air. This, of course, also killed our top speed number, which was just a blip over 67 miles per hour with a full tank of gas and a 240 pound rider. Certainly better conditions, less fuel, and a lighter rider would give up a few more miles per hour. But again, what makes the Ultra 310X the monster that it is, isn't top speed or acceleration numbers. That's the stuff for bench racers to argue about over on Facebook. What I'm talking about is ride quality, and this thing's got it in spades. It's super solid, there's no dumb rattles or weird chatter from loose panels, it's well balanced, it's exhilarating, and just a hell of a lot of fun to ride. Sure, there's a few things I'd like to see fixed and or changed, I mean, the totally sealed engine cover? Come on, who thought that was a good idea? But then again, name me something that's flawless. But dude, I'm telling you, when you nail the throttle, there's nothing like it. I've given a lot of praise to different machines, and some less deserving than others. But I'm gonna tell you this, when people ask me, which brand new ski would you buy? My answer is gonna be this one. It would be a 2022 Kawasaki Ultra 310X jet ski. I'm Kevin Shaw and you've been watching the Watercraft Journal. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, leave a comment, and share it with your friends. It'll definitely help us grow the channel. And if you want more awesome jet ski content, make sure to hit the subscribe button so you won't miss a single video and visit us over at www.watercraftjournal.com where new articles are written and published every day, Monday through Friday, entirely free to you.